I guess, I, I guess this we are recording. Uh, welcome everyone to IPFS Implementer Sync for the 18th of the January 2024. Oh gosh, the time flies. Um, yeah, so uh, folks who are on the call, feel free to add items to the agenda. Uh, this one may, is maybe a bit like short stuffed because we have some like meeting uh, scheduling conflict this week, but we will figure it out the next time uh, to ensure people are like more people are able to attend. Um, I'll start with uh, some implementation updates. Um, the usual, uh, the new Kubo is landing soon. The number increases. <laughs> uh, for this one, um, it's uh, it has some like uh, internal fixes, but I believe the main one uh, for end users is that you can finally, after multiple years, you can assign a name to a local pin. Uh, so that's a huge, huge feature. Well, well, better late than never. Um, uh, there's RC already, so feel free to test it. And uh, the final one should land uh, later this week. Um, the Rainbow, which is uh, a gateway implementation uh, based on the Boxo gateway library, which is the same gateway implementation that's in Kubo, but it's more tailored towards just running a gateway without uh, reproviding content. Uh, it's being tested for IPFSIO, dev.link, and also we have a dedicated trustless gateway link uh, domain on which only trustless responses are allowed. Um, so far, so good. If you see any issues, let us know. Um, some guy is um, a software for running your own delegated routing endpoints. Uh, right now, we have a test instance uh, deployed at uh, delegated IPFS.dev. Uh, it implements the routing v1 API um, and it's backed by both CID.contact IPNI and also uh, a tailored DHT uh, lookup client. So if you hit this from a web browser, you should get results from both uh, IPNI and um, DHT. Um, and uh, we also started working on a fetch API inspired um, abstraction for web developers. We call it Helia Fetch. It may be called Helia Verified Fetch to be very clear that whatever you get, whatever you fetch with that is uh, uh, verified. The hashes are verified. Uh, initial design discussion is happening in the Helia um, uh, ticket here. Um, more, I think the useful framing for this work is that there are some gaps between where web developers are and they uh, think about putting something uh, on IPFS and then getting it back and working with it. Uh, for example, you can put JSON in multiple ways. You could put it as a raw block. You can put it as a raw block and have a CID with JSON or DAG JSON codec. You could put it as a duck seaboard and retrieve it as JSON, uh, or you could put a JSON file on UXFS. <laughs> All those are valid and they have their own, uh, you may have your own reasons to do so, um, but uh, the end user should not really know about those types of complexities when they just want to read JSON from IPFS. So this will be a nice abstraction, which for example, you can, put a CID uh, or content path of that thing, uh, IPFS URI, and you get a response. You call JSON function on that response and you get a JSON uh, object. Um, details TBD, it's just kind of like a hint of the level of abstraction and the porcelain we want to provide uh, to the community with this. And the long-term goal is for this to be a, a low level, a building block, uh, on top of which a service worker gateway is built. Uh, so we will re we'll reuse all the uh, code that uh, produces uh, HTTP responses, uh, response objects uh, in fetch lag uh, API. And then that will, could be used inside of uh, people's service workers or in general for building uh, one, uh, which 
which will be pretty exciting for dub developers who want to reduce risk of hosting front ends and things like that. Um, and the second one, a uh, second point on, on, on the agenda is IPIP corner. Uh, I'll, I'll very briefly just mention the two IPIPs which we were supposed to merge before uh, holiday break, <laughs> but it did not happen. So there's like still time. <laughs> We will probably merge them uh, this or next week, but uh, if you have uh, late comments, uh, those two feel pretty solid. Uh, we are so sourcing feedback on the delegated uh, puts. So, um, for example, the endpoints like this one right now are only get. Um, and we've been asked for uh, having a a specification uh, and maybe like a reference implementation. How do how could people delegate puts to so, to the, some other service which speaks this API? So uh, the, we've simplified IPIP a little bit, and thanks Will and others uh, who worked uh, on this uh, uh, for the past few months. Uh, uh, we were like uh, on and off on this one, but I think uh, right now we are pretty close in that there's a work in progress implementation in Boxer routing, and we most likely will land this in, in some guy, uh, allowing people to run their own uh, endpoints and, and start experimenting with uh, storing uh, put information there. Um, so the feedback welcome. I, I have the... questions about this. Like, is, yeah. is the plan that that would that those puts would then just live in some guys, like in a local database there, or would they be repropagated further? Yeah. So that's a very good question, and I think the answer is probably both. In that, uh, in some guy, it, it would be fairly easy for us to have a, like a local store and have a POC where you just publish to some guy and it stores it there and it acts like similar to BitTorrent tracker. And then the next step would be for some guy, depending on which backends are set up there to maybe like reprovide it uh, at its own pace. Um, since like puts will be signed, you could be uh, having multiple hops. Uh, I don't know how realistic that is. I think for the, request I linked here, this like work in progress implementation, uh, we we would uh, want to do it just like locally. You do the put for some guy and we will deal with propagating uh, like forward uh, to other backends uh, in a, in the future people requests. That's my current understanding, but I also need to- Cool. I mean, I, I think in to some extent, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think the guidance that is going to be interesting is you know, up to what size provider are you willing to offer that some guy performance? And then for entities that have large data sets where they're, they outgrow that, would we imagine that they'd run a local some guy that would take their corpus and be permissioned and then push it to IPNI or something? Or would we have some other piece of software that we'd recommend really large providers co-locate with their IPNI or, or with their Kubo or, or other IPFS instance to if and then forward it to something like the DHD or IPNI, um, and then have it like circle back. So like knowing what those edges are, so that we're recommending some sane set of paths so that all content is discoverable. Like I think the the fear is uh, if we do this as the first implementation, and one of our large pinning providers goes to this, and then we don't keep up with it. Um, or we incur a large cost in a way that is less fast than we want. What is the what is the path for a normal IPFS user? Which I think this is a very reasonable path. And what is the path for a large IPFS provider? And we should think about that larger case as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a very good point. And we, uh, we, 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 we you could tell we have a similar prior art for just like the DHT advice, uh, like announcing DHT, uh, to announcing to the DHT from Kubo. So uh, a few releases back, I, I, I believe Jeropo added a code which detects that you are really falling behind at your current rate of announcements. You like you have more CIDs. That then you are able to announce in that window, which is like twenty four hours or forty eight hours. So I, I I suspect some something similar 
would be uh, easy to implement or should we should not ship anything without uh, having that sort of a thing where we warn people so for example like if we have a client in kubo we, where the puts are enabled it should detect that okay for the amount of data you have this api is, is not enough you grew beyond that and you need to use something uh, better like a bigger canon um that's my current understanding but uh yeah we probably will uh i, I feel like we can probably get guidance that's a little bit clearer than after you try it and see and and get warned and and fail and then fall back I, like I, I feel like we could either say things like if all keys chan is taking more than an hour to return that's a bad sign or like if you've got more than 100 gigs that's a bad sign like there there's just like a set of heuristics oh, yeah. that are probably useful lines yeah. in here um yeah yeah but that also that also probably applies to the dht heuristic we have it's it's a very similar one just then triggers will be different um yeah so i i guess that's uh on, on this one uh would be good to double check there we've simplified it it's just like one uh item per uh cid we don't have like a block announcements anymore uh unix fs specs uh, there's a bunch of feedback which we need to process, but there's still time to put more feedback there. So I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, and I think that's it on the agenda. I think now is a good moment if you have any ad hoc topics or want to discuss anything. Um, I'll stop sharing maybe. We can also get some time back. <laughs> I I warn this will be a bit bit short stuffed and uh, thin on topics. Um, so maybe like calling once, calling twice. Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, think I, did. I guess maybe uh, well a question is. Uh, is Lassie living under Saturn these days, or is it living elsewhere? Yep, under Saturn. OK, cool. Um, yeah, I was just thinking in the context of uh, we are likely going to be changing how uh, how sessions are constructed, because they're not so fun right now. Um, I think it mostly doesn't matter for Lassie, because I think they have their own Bit swap concept sessions? of sessions. Bit swap sessions. What, what do you like, mean by session? I mean, so uh, I mean, I, in short, we, we have the word session as a class in multiple places. Uh, yeah, I guess when I say session, I mean the 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 abstract concept of I have a pile of requests for data that are probably correlated, and some system should think about how to do those better. Um, BitSwap has its own way of doing that. If you tried to expand from, say, BitSwap to also BitSwap plus HTTP requests, you would need a different way of doing that, um, et cetera. Uh, even just the way we're doing with BitSwap right now, like the, the the code plumbing is sort of insufficient. So I think there's a there's a plan to change the interfaces for how that's constructed around um, to make that less painful. E easy example is that right now- Will that pull it out requests, of the BitSwap? Is like so that it also can have a separate like content routing understanding of that and so forth. Is that so? So like not yet. The first order of business is like make it easier to have one session per real request, uh, and probably to do that by jamming uh, the session identifier into the context in some way. Um, because people. I think it's been somewhat empirically proven over the last however many years that people are bad at constructing a single pass through object that is a session per real request. Um, and so the, the context at least will help them because they're good at passing the context so that they can cancel their requests. Um, so that they've cared enough about cancellation that 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 all that should follow through. Um, but yeah, so I think figuring out how we do that one is the first order of business because it it turns out that yeah, getting it right has been hard for people. Um, 
And then the next order will be now that the abstraction is a little better, how do we like lift it out of BitSwap um, so that we can do other things with it? Cool, makes sense. Yeah. All right. All right. Looks Probably like that's ones. it for all for now, folks. Yeah. See you next time. Maybe different time. We'll see how the Luma resetup will work. Ciao. Bye.